It was break week for most of the kids this last week, right? You're going back to school next week. That's the hardest week for parents, man. Any break week, vacation week, that's rough. Keep those kids entertained. You know what I mean? Kids don't know. Kids have no idea what I mentioned earlier. They don't know what it's like. Kids don't know what it's like to have kids. <laughs> it's a whole different world out there, man. It's rough. I didn't realize that. Before I had kids, I had nephews. I used to babysit my nephews all the time. My brother has four boys. I used to babysit those kids. Uh, my brother doesn't talk to me anymore. Because I used to go over there, and it would be Uncle Lenny rules. You know what I mean? I had like a list of, list of rules my brothers would give me, and this would be like what I would have to, I'd have to follow all these rules, what they could eat, watch on TV, chores, homework, all that stuff. And my brother left, and as far as I was concerned, the rules left right with him. I didn't care. I let those kids do whatever they want. They could stay up all night, watch anything on TV. I would feed them huge bowls of sugar with Red Bull and no dose and espresso. Get them all jacked up. And my brother would come home and I would just check my messages all night long. It would be hours of beep, they won't go to bed. I hate you, man. Beep, I gotta work tomorrow. Beep, Uncle Lenny, what's an aneurysm? <laughs> it's tough to keep them entertained during these break weeks, man. That's really hard. You know who's brilliant at the whole kid entertainment thing? Disney. They're geniuses. There's a home run every time because they develop a character and they put them in a movie. And if the kids go to the movie, they'll take the character, put them in another movie, and another, and another. And then when the kids stop going, they'll take that character and put them in a bunch of straight to DVD movies. And another, and another, and another. Till the kids stop buying, they'll take the character and put them in a cartoon, and a coloring book, and the internet, and the TV show. They will suck the life out of every character they have ever created. And then when they're out of ideas, they're like, I don't know, put them on skates and send them on the road. They'll pimp out every character they have at Disney and Ice shows all over the world. It doesn't matter what character it is. I saw Nemo on ice. Think about that for a second. That's fish on ice. And it's sushi, where I come from. Even the kids don't know what's going on. They're like, why does Nemo have legs? They go, I don't know, I can't help you. My youngest daughter is a big fan of those Transformer movies. She loves watching those. Tra I hate those Transformer movies, all of them. I can't stand them. I, you know why? Because I'm colorblind. <laughs> yeah, if you know what I'm talking about. Because I have no idea what robot is fighting who. <laughs> it's just a big cluster mess. Of, I'm like, well, who's fighting? Who's winning? Where's Optimus Primus? What's happening? <laughs> who's winning the Ford or the Chevy? Help me out. <laughs> last time, I'll be honest with you, though, the last time we went to those movies, we went to the last Transformer movie, there was one moment in that movie that made me cry. I got emotional. I got a tear in my eye when I was watching that movie and I suddenly realized there was an hour and a half left in that movie. <laughs> so special effects are too much, man. That's what kills me is special effects in movies. I mean, it's, they used to be cool, they used to be impressive. I don't think anybody is impressed with special effects anymore in a movie. You know what I mean? It's not that big a deal. Computer graphic imaging is like this generation's microwave. Anybody remember when a microwave first came out? It was the greatest invention ever. They cooked a hot dog in 30 seconds. Oh. No one had five minutes to boil a hot dog back in the 70s, no one. And when they first came out, man, you, there wasn't a big advertising campaign. There was no internet. You just heard about these magical machines that popped up all over the neighborhood. And somebody would get one and you would go there. And my buddy guy, he said, you gotta come see this thing. We go to his house and it's the, I'm talking about the first generation of microwaves, the radar range. It was huge, it was the size of a Pinto, it was enormous. It took three people to move it into the house. You had to move the fridge for room for it. Had a huge door with a latch. Like, you could walk into it, like, put down a hot dog, like, we better get out of here. Close the door. And there was a round, there was a dial with five numbers and a square red button. You would just turn to one of those numbers, ping, and hit the button. It was loud. It was the loudest machine in the whole house. And you always knew when somebody had one, because when you turned it on, all the lights in the house would dim really low. And you didn't care what it was doing to your head, you'd get this close to it. I could see the cheese melting. It would glow red out of the sides, sparks would fly out of the back of it, your hair would blow back. All the plants in the house would die. Grandpa would come out, my cancer's gone! 